Okay, Bible class. What we're going to do, uh, I have a lesson here for you today about, it's called Prophetic Future from the Bible. You'll have two sheets. Of course, these are already filled out. Um, but you have two sheets. I'll make them front and back for you. And there's 25 different uh, points here. Some have more than one that we'll discuss. Now, a lot of people are concerned about the future because of what's going on now. And that's a good time to, it's an interest in studying what God's Word says. I can go to Fortune Teller, you can go to some other procrastinator, and he's going to say this and that. And, um, but God's Word is true. There's over 300 prophecies about Christ first coming to the earth. All of them were completely fulfilled uh, as Jesus came here to this earth. And, uh, and he died and and was buried and resurrected, went back. Then there's hundreds of prophecies about his second coming. We're going to look at just a few of them today. And uh, so that's where we're going with all this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a timeline here from us today to the future. And it's a little bit, you know, hokey, whatever. I'm not a great drawer, of course. But uh, it'll help you understand. Okay, we'll call this today. All right, right here. All right. And uh, so what happens to the future? Well, this person, we're going to put them in the grave here. They got their arms folded. Their eyes are closed, you know. And, uh, well, they died. What happens to believers when they die? Well, according to the Bible, uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, to be absent from the body. That means like you're absent in class, you're not in class. To be absent from the body means you're not any longer in the body, no longer there. To be absent from the body, that's what death is. When you, the real person, the soul and spirit, leave the body, the body's empty. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? So those folks, their bodies were buried. They're up here in heaven with the Lord, okay? Beautiful place, and um, going on there, we're gonna talk about that, but they're with the Lord in heaven. Well, one of the next, on God's prophetic calendar of major events, the next major event is the rapture. The Lord Jesus Christ, it says, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ, he's going to raise up. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, we'll put two Christians here. One is a happy Christian. They got the victory. One is a very sad person. They've been saved, but they're kind of self-willed, and uh, we all have problem with that. And they're not surrendering to the Lord. So this one's got the joy of the Lord. This one doesn't. But at the, at the rapture, then we which are alive or remain shall be caught up together with them, with our loved ones in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So God, the Bible says, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus, talking about the sleeping body, okay, will God bring with him He's going to bring them out of heaven with him. The Lord himself then shall descend from where? Heaven. With a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. So that's called the rapture. Very important event here. Okay? So we have the, the dead in Christ rising first, the rapture. When Jesus comes again, he said, Behold, I come quickly. This is a throne. We'll call this the judgment. seat of Christ. When Jesus comes again, he said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. So, there is a judgment. This judgment is for Christians. At the end here, I'm going to show you another judgment that is for the unsaved. But 
This is a judgment for Christians not to determine whether they're saved or not. The fact that they got raptured up means they're saved. Okay? But the fact to see if they get any rewards for the things they've done. Now, there's actually five crowns that God said that you can get. And we'll put those here. And, and of course, on your sheet, you can see these and you can fill them in as we go. Okay? First of all, the strivers. The striver's crown. Okay? And this word crown, by the way, just mention this, is Stephanus. And it's Stephanus in the old Greek games. And remember, they were the ones that gave us our Olympics. And you would come before the emperor if you won, if you were a winner. And he would call you up to a platform. He would bend down and put this Stephanus. It was a, a little twine vine um, with some leaves on it. And it was not very valuable in itself because you can go out your backyard and get them. But this is the one from the emperor. He's honoring you above all other people in the kingdom. And he places that on you. That was called a Stephanus. And it was greatly treasured. Well, that's this word that God chose to use. And so we have the striver's crown. And you don't need to write this down. What that is, those that master the flesh. You got this person here who, um, you know, has kind of got a peg leg and, you know, maybe one broken leg or whatever. But they're happy in the Lord. They're living victorious. They read the God's word every day. They're seeking the Lord in their life. Okay, they're staying. That they don't, they're not sinless, but they sin a lot less than this guy who self-willed, wanting to do his own thing and miserable with it and just wants to do um, everything. They'll never get in God's Word. They'll never submit to God. Uh, of course, some of those folks have never been saved. But we'll just say these two folks are saved. All right? Now, this guy would be the striver. He masters the flesh. He has the victory over the flesh. He would even possibly then do this, the soul winner's crown. The soul winner's crown. That's those who actively engage in taking the gospel to others, in sharing the gospel, bringing others to Christ, influencing them for the Lord. The third one, the sufferer's crown. The sufferer's crown. Okay? And that's those who are suffering for the Lord, and they don't, because of persecution, because of other suffering, it doesn't cause them to quit. They just keep on going. And they finish the race. And it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a long race. It's for the rest of our lives. And they end up finishing the race. By the way, in a marathon, the last six miles of a 26 point, what, three is it, miles, the last six miles, people are dropping like flies. And they're quitting. And a lot of people quit serving the Lord. They never finish the race. And this person is going through terrible suffering, maybe persecution, people living in other countries, and they're going through all kinds of things, but they continue faithfully to the end. They're going to get that sufferer's crown. Now, these are not what they're called in the Scripture. I just alliterated them to help us remember them better. Okay? Then the shepherd's crown. The shepherd's crown. The shepherd's crown is given to faithful shepherds who feed and lead the flock of God. Like a pastor uh, could get that crown. That's the shepherd's crown. And then the last one here is the seeker's crown. And I wish this one for all of you, and I want to get this one. Seeker's crown. Paul the Apostle said, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, is what he called it. Crown of living right. Um, and whom the Lord will give unto me on that day, and not to me only, but to all them that love his appearing. They're yearning and looking forward to the coming of Christ, and they're living in such a way, serving God. So, striver's crown, those who master the flesh and are not defeated by sin in their life. And if they do sin, when they sin, not if, but when they sin, they confess, they get back right with God, keep running the race. Soul winner's crown, influencing people for Christ. The sufferer's crown, faithful to the end through uh, severe suffering. A shepherd's crown, a pastor, a flock, a lead, and, and a flock. And then the seeker's crown, all right? So that's the judgment seat of Christ. Now, while that's going on,